Hey Cloud Gamers, today we're looking at Borderlands 3 as it's been on Pro as a free to play title over the weekend for Borderlands 3. I really do hope that Stadia do some more of these type of things or at least let us demo the games using this kind of mechanism as it has worked extremely well. Starting with the speed test then, we have Google Stadia on the left, maximum settings 2080 Super Rig in the middle for the high end comparison and Shadow PC, the boost here on the right, as an equivalent to Google Stadia, and also to see how it compares against a top-end rig. Borderlands 3 has got to be one of the slowest loading games that I have played on across most of the platforms, though even Google Stadia does struggle to keep its one minute click to play here. But we can see we are at the 2K logo at 51 seconds. while the others are still starting up. You can see we're at the loading screen at around 110 there for Google Stadia. And the loading screen does seem to stick around for quite a while on all platforms. See Shadow Boost starting to load up there. Maximum settings seems to be lagging a little bit behind here, but Google Stadia has hit the signing in screen at 138. And maximum settings there finally hits the 2K logo just ahead of Shadow Boost there. 146 for maximum settings and 151 for Shadow Boost. But Google Stadia has already hit the menu screen at 149. As this was my first playthrough, I did have to sort out the brightness, etc. But this is essentially the menu screen. Yeah, there's still lagging behind here. And even once I'd got those settings at 221 there, I'm at the actual menu screen on Google Stadia. The maximum settings slowly catching up then and hitting the sign in page there at 2 minutes 34. And to the menu screen then at 2.44. Shadow Boost finally reaching the signing in screen then at 2.52. And finally hitting a type of menu page at 3 minutes 1, so Shadow Boost being the slowest there. Google Stadia really showing off its load speed there at 1.49 really to get to the play screens. With maximum settings being the high end rig in second which is kind of expected. Now, feeling a little bit different this time. It turns out that the intro movie for Borderlands 3 is capped at 30 frames per second. So this is a perfect opportunity to compare like for like across all three systems of how those graphics look. Although it looks like in-game graphics, this is essentially a movie. And that shows here because you can see that across the board, it's looking very, very similar. It would be very hard for us to see any difference between all three platforms. And in these scenarios, this is where Google Stadia really shines for me. I must have seen this intro screen about 20, 30 times, but it still makes me smile every time. You've got to love the Borderlands intro. It really does set you up for the game. This is such an awesome intro, but we're going to now go on to some of the intro gameplay. So you can see those actual in-game graphics. And this is the first time that we see Claptrap getting himself into trouble. Easy, easy, 
obviously Google Stadia only shows me the stream settings which you can see with the nice select stream monitor down in the bottom here if you do like that there's a link in the description you can see as the magnet kicks in as you would expect the MX S2080 Super is holding above 100 frames per second and Shadow is keeping above 60 maybe there's 70 plus frames per second there so the streamers are capped at around 60 frames per second anyway but it does go to show that the frames on the actual game itself are holding quite high and what this does give you the opportunity is to see how high Google Stadia is actually keeping that FPS as keeping in sync with the both Shadow Boost and Maximum Settings rigs here with no stutter what I do see quite clearly though is that the MXS version is looking a little bit crisper so moving into some individual gameplay here starting with Google Stadia again if they're not side by side it is looking pretty good and also it plays extremely well it's very smooth and if they're not side by side you wouldn't be able to tell much difference I think because I've been looking at these images quite a lot I can see that Google Sadia's image does look a little bit fuzzy compared to the others but it's also worth bearing in mind that this is my Mac so this is Chrome on Mac which is not as clear as the PC versions and definitely not as clear as the Chromecast Ultra all in all it is looking fantastic though and is more than playable So moving over to the maximum settings 2080, you can see straight away that the image is just a little bit clearer overall. But I think Google said it did have slightly better contrast. You can see a slight input lag here as the maximum settings servers are in Canada and I'm in the UK for these tests. So you can see a little bit of input lag there but otherwise the game is looking absolutely fantastic. And it's surprising how quickly you get used to that 100 millisecond lag. As we are looking at graphics and frames per second here, again in that fast gameplay we are getting dips into the 70-80 frames per second, but otherwise holding above 100. So moving on to the Shadow Boost. Again, using the Mac client here, I think Shadow Boost actually looks the most washed out for me once compared against the other two. Not sure why this is, generally it looks quite rich, but in Borderlands, it, the vibrancy really does stand out, and for some reason, the Shadow Boost just looks a little bit more washed out than the others. You can see the frames per second dipping into the 50s there during the gunfights. So while it does hold above 60 most of the time, it, once things start getting a little bit busy, it does drop back down into those 50s. So for the last section then we're going to do the shiv fight side by side. And once again, Google Stadia looking very good on those colors and contrasts, but looks like maximum settings 2080s does have the better vibrancy here. And again, we can see those frames per second even on the maximum settings rig, dipping into the 70s there. But otherwise, pinging back over the 100 mark, Shadow Boost still dipping down into the 60s but still holding 70 plus frames quite happily and in comparison with Google Stadia you can see that kind of blurriness that I was talking about earlier which is remnant on most Mac versions I've found using Chrome and this is another downside to using a Mac still for gaming which is annoying because you would have thought that they would be able to get this right with the high-end hardware 
but using Stadia on PC is definitely a better experience and Chromecast Ultra even more. There you have it, so there's Borderlands 3 across the three systems. Take your pick on what you want to play on, but Google Stadia is definitely holding its own here. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to Cloud Gaming Extreme for all of the latest across all cloud gaming platforms and I will see you next time.